somewhere, like a coveted jewel, a beautiful place is threatened with destruction. Its story traveled the world, dividing some and uniting others in a common attempt to assure its survival. On a hill of powdered sand stands a white pine forest, the oldest one in North America planted by human hands over a century ago. Its protecting arms embrace the small village nestling below the hillside. A century ago, clear cutting and overgrazing reduced the soil to bare sand. Rain, wind, and spring floods swept the sand dunes into the village, threatening its very existence, and the decision to relocate the villagers, their homes, and their church was seriously considered. At this point, the parish priest suggested that the sand dunes might be controlled by planting white pine trees a solution that proved more feasible than relocating the entire community. A newspaper article in La Presse, July 1918, reads as follows. Men, women, and children, Indians and whites, went up into the mountains, down into the valleys, the deep woods and the lakesides, to uproot young saplings and bring them to the exposed hillside. Each tree had to be found, unearthed, and marked on its north side so as to allow it to face north again when newly planted. Reforestation was no easy task. It is difficult to imagine the instability of the soil at that time especially when viewing these images. New plants were often swept away during high winds and storms. Most of the pines were planted in rows in the French manner. The other trees were sown randomly, English style. The saplings took root under the watchful eye of two Indians, their appointed guardians. All in all, 100,000 trees were planted, mostly white pine, intermingled with hemlock, white spruce, cedar, fir, larch, and other species. Reforestation covered some six square kilometers of ground over a period from 1886 to the end of the 1920s. By the 1920s, the sand problem was finally resolved. The network of entwining plant roots immobilized the shifting soil. The forest had won. Over the years, the number of trees has decreased. Nature's fortress, however, still shelters the village below from the northwest winds. The eastern white pine is easy to identify with its needles and bundles of five. In autumn, they enrich the soil while spreading a magnificent russet carpet. The undergrowth is home to a myriad of familiar insects, as well as to some rare plants and numerous types of mushrooms and medicinal herbs.
the forest is a haven of repose, forever sacred to humans who seek peace and serenity, and who come to absorb the vital energy from the trees, the plants, the springs, and the streams. Almost dried out at the end of summer, the marsh is the birthplace of a small brook which wends its way through this ecological heritage. Along the way, cool springs flow from the banks, trickling slowly between the clay and sand and merging with the stream. It meanders through a deeply hidden ravine, carving its way through the sand until it reaches a bed of clay and gently flows towards the lake. This is not a legend. This is the story of the white pine forest of Okakenesatake. It is the tale of a forest which witnessed many upheavals and is still endangered today due to man's cupidity in a planned housing development. It is the tale of a collective task accomplished by two nations, Indian and white, who together, long ago, planted an inheritance for their children's children. For its beauty, for its wildlife, for its environmental impact, for its past, present, and future influence on the shifting sands, we ask, and this, regardless of who the owner might be, that the forest of the small and large Oka commons be protected and become part of our ecological heritage. <laughs> 